Hisuian Typhlosion. Now this Pokemon is pretty unique and it kind of stood out to me. It's got a signature move, which I didn't know about until I started playing uh, Scarlet and Violet. I didn't, I didn't start off with this Pokemon or just didn't have the Pokemon for Arceus, but it's got Infernal Parade. First off, the abilities that we have for the Hisuian Typhlosion is Frisk and Blaze. On switching, this Pokemon identifies the health items of all opposing Pokemon. It's a pretty useful ability, mainly because you want to scout out to see if there's like other Pokemon there have like Choice Scarf, so you can see if they're going to outspeed you. Pretty much just to get an idea of what their uh, plan is. So based off the stats, we have a pretty we have pretty good all around stats. It's a pretty good mon. Um, we're going to max out our speed and our special attack with the timid nature and the signature ability we have is the infernal parade. It has a 30% chance to burn two times power if target is already status. Now that's pretty, pretty sick. Not going to lie. So the idea with this build is you have a Pokemon on your team that can status the opposing team. The idea was you had a Glamora lead, you set up Toxic Spikes for free, do some extra damage on the opposing Pokemon, or if you have a Pokemon that can, you know, Thunder Wave things, or, you know, you have a Pokemon with red card, you paralyze a Pokemon, then they activate your red card, they're forced to switch out, you can status another Pokemon. Then you can bring out like Glamora or something, start setting up hazards or like toxic spikes or whatever it may be. You go for a Willow is etc. Pretty much any of those, you know, fun uh status moves. Uh, toxic and whatnot. Then you can start, you know, you can hold the Hisuian Typhlosion for like your end game sweep. The whole team's already crippled. That's if you get into that situation. Of course, we do have the Shadow Ball as an option just in case if, you know, the Pokemon isn't status. But the cool thing about Infernal Parade that you may not know is that people would say that Hex is a lot better. And it is a little bit stronger. But the idea of Infernal Parade is that, or what makes it so different than Hex is that Pokemon with levitate or flying, pretty much Pokemon that, that can't, you know, touch ground or are unaffected by toxic spikes, is that we have a 30% chance to burn. So mainly Pokemon that have like, you know, heavy duty boots will not be affected by toxic spikes. So you have a chance to actually burn the target. And then you can start, you know, hoping you live a turn and then just start going for our infernal parade. So that's a cool thing about this move. Moving on, Shadow Ball is an option, or it's probably our only special offensive option, but you can always run, you know, something else over Infernal Parade. It depends on what you, what you want to go for, but we have Shadow Ball. Uh, flamethrower, if you're not a flamethrower kind of guy and you were, are extremely greedy, then go for the overheat. It gets overheat and um, what's the other move? I don't think anyone's going to be using Blast Burn. It's pretty much like a Hyper Beam, but it's not my go-to for that. Uh, Flamethrower, it gets Heat Wave for doubles, so that's definitely another option. We have Extra Sensory for Pokemon that are, you know, affected to Psychic, Poison types, or, you know, Toxabex could be a lead, problematic problem. And you ha also have a 10% chance to uh, make the target flinch, so that's pretty cool. So that's the first build. Let's go on to the second one, as we have... Probably not going to be a popular item for Hisuian Typhlosion. But we have Focus Sash. We have Calm Mind to raise our special attack and special defense. And then we have Overheat. Uh, Focus Sash is mainly there because of the Blaze ability. As it will give us a 1.5 times with Fire type attacks. 
uh, of course, when, you know, HP is one third. But flamethrower is there. Just in case if you don't want to lower your special attack by two or, you know, we get in a situation where blaze is activated and then we can just overheat just to do the most damage, just depending on the Pokemon or potentially pick up a knockout. Uh, flamethrower is there as well with the blaze, which is pretty fun. Shadow Ball, of course. It's a pretty simple Pokemon all around until we start getting a little bit more fancy with the builds. But this one was pretty interesting to me. We have Substitute with Leftovers. Calm Mind to raise their special attack and special defense. Shadow Ball, Flamethrower. Uh, once again, whichever fire type move um, makes you feel good. But the idea is pretty much to avoid Pokemon that have like Sucker Punch. Like if there's a King Gambit on the other side of the field, you know, and you know you're in a 1v1 situation, you can substitute and then flamethrower away because they're, they're going to be clicking uh, Sucker Punch and you'll still be able to outspeed them unless they start playing like mind games with you. Of course, the Assault Vest is kind of scary on the King Gambit. Or, you know, you substitute Terrifier, Flamethrower, etc. Um, that way you also avoid, like, status conditions with a substitute. If, like, something comes in and it's not faster than you and they try to go for, like, a Thunder Wave, you pretty much avoid that. Moving on to the next build. This was a pretty semi-bulk uh, build. I found it kind of fun. I'm not too sure how I feel about it, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, we have Will-O-Wisp and Infernal Parade. Like I said, if you want to lead off with other Pokemon that can, you know, do the status thing for you, then you won't need to have Will-O-Wisp. But I like to have Will-O-Wisp only mainly on here because of those physical Pokemon that can give us that temporary defensive boost because it will Will-O-Wisp pretty much decreases or halves the attack of the opposing uh, target and then we can just start going for the infernal parade and then just doing double damage if something decides to switch out you know it might get burned as well and maybe you can also pair it up with another pokemon that has like um what is it hex i think that would be cool i, I forgot i think there's another move out there that that does double damage on status Pokemon besides Hex. I think it was Venal Shock. That's if they're poisoned, I think. Yeah. Flamethrower, Calm Mind. We, we're going to get that Leftovers Recovery. Uh, if you want to run Citrus Berry, then feel free to do so. That's also an option. But for this set, we have Max Speed. You can also reduce the speed if you want to invest a little bit in more bulk or your HP. It's completely optional. And the Terra type as well. We went for the Dark Terra only because... We don't want to deal with a prankster Pokemon or unless you want to go for a little bit more coverage then you go Terra Grass or Terra Water. Uh, whatever Terra type, you know, pleases you. Uh, next set is your original, <laughs> most popular, probably. Uh, you either go Modest or Timid. If you go Modest, you're going to be doing more offensive damage. Timid, you're just going to have more speed and potentially just outspeeding everything. Uh, we are going to be choice scarfed as well. So me personally, I would probably run modest on this, especially if you have like the sticky web support, then you're in a more fantastic position. So eruption, eruption, choice scarf, less power as users HP decreases. So if you already taking damage on a Typhlosion and you try to go for an eruption and you're just like half HP or just like in the red area, you're you're not going to be doing any damage so that's why we have overheat just in case if we need to you know we make a misplay or you know we have to end up sacking a pokemon that you know you're not going to need typhlosion has to take a hit then we just have overheat shadow ball the terror blast uh grass gastrodon is not going to like this and whatnot so yeah uh, I think you could even run like Terra Ice as well for those Dragon Mons. All right, moving on to the next build. Now, don't laugh at this build. This is a pretty funny, fun one. Okay. 
Hisuian Typhlosion with the Choice Span. <laughs> I thought this was pretty cool because it was able to learn uh, some of these moves, but like I said, this Typhlosion is pretty almost all around. We have Choice Band, Earthquake. Heat Trans not gonna like that. We have Shadow Claw with the high critical hit ratio. Flare Blitz as our heavy hitting fire type attack. And then we have Wild Charge. Gyarados isn't too happy about that one. Or any other Pokemon. Uh, we go Jolly on this one. If you, you know, have that speed control, you know, go for Adamant Nature. You get more power out of it. Um, there were some other things I wanted to discuss besides this Choice Band set. Um, we do have Assault Vest as another option as well. Uh, you could always run that instead of you know doing this. Um, yeah, I think I think you'll be fine. You'll be able to survive certain things. Let's see. We also can do like naive nature where we can still incorporate this build, right? Actually, this will be very different. I'm trying to remember which nature is the one that decreases. No, actually, naive is perfect. Okay, so naive and assault vest. So you'll you'll make up, you'll lose quite a bit of special defense because of the nature, but we can make that up with assault vest. And from here, you can still be max speed, you know, and you can have overheat. Uh, we won't need this, and we won't need that. But we'll be able to do some damage with Earthquake still. For those Pokemon that are either four times or just uh, physically weak. So, for example, like Fluttermane has a pretty bad defense. You can go for an Earthquake on the Fluttermane. Uh, depending on the scenario, of course. So, let's see... Or if you want to, you know, have Flare Blitz on there or Iron Head, you can carry the Iron Head on here and you'll have like a an all around all around physical and special build uh, instead of, you know, Zen Headbutt. That's always cool, too. Uh, let's see. We had some other ideas going off of this. Um, if you're going to be a Pokemon that you just... You know, you're not going to need Typhlosion. Hisui and Typhlosion, you know, can curse. Put pressure on the opponent. With curse. Oh, it also gets play rough as well. Low kick as well. Rock slide. Uh, pu thunder punch. Let's see. It's got that bulldoze support for, you know, activating weakness policy and doubles. And it's got the pledge. Oh, I don't know this thing got how. <laughs> Reversal, smoke screen, and uh, power herb, solar beam. It's fun. So, solar beam is you know can be utilized if you're running this Pokemon under sun, or if you know you don't want to wait a turn, you can solar beam without the sun. And boom. I'm trying to think of other items that you can utilize. Uh, Expert Belt. We talked about Focus Sash. Heavy Duty Boots is also an option. And of course, Life Orb. Feel free to run Life Orb on even something like this. This build, if you're not into choice locked items, you can get rid of choice specs and add Life Orb on this build as well. Even on the Combine build. Uh, citrus berry maybe you want to run a salak berry absorb bulb could be fun when you tear grass and then you get a special attack boost a uh, charcoal holders fire type attacks have one point times two power fun right so that's another option as well now i don't think every pokemon gets taunt right yeah okay 
But yeah, that pretty much sums up the Hisuian Typhlosion. That's enough rambling for me. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.